Uh, let me start. Uh, my topic is the peninsula self-consciousness of Hong Kong and in its maritime and continental feudal. Uh, this is uh, an unfinished paper, and I, I would say it's quite ambitious and controversial, not, not because of the political reason, but because I'm trying to combine Wasuji Tetsuro's methodology of Rudo with uh, Hegel's dialectic in this paper. So in uh, the first session, I will discuss Wasuji methodology of Rudo, uh, why climate and land interact with the human culture, why human culture arises from the climate and land. And then I'll point out that Wasuji disregard the element of C. That's why I introduced Hegel, because in Hegel's three moments of the universal relation, uh, C is a very important uh, element, although Hegel insists that um, cultural spirit pre exist the land and climate and uh, the interaction between culture and the nation. And then uh, I have explained, after I have explained this philosophical methodology, I'll introduce the concept of land and sea self-consciousness and apply it to the context of Hong Kong. So let's begin with uh, Wasuji. Uh, sorry, let me make the screens smaller. Okay. In Wasuji's Fudo, published in 1930s, Wasuji argues that human existence or human society in are conditioned by climatic and environmental conditions, known as Fudo. Following the Buddhist notion of emptiness, Wasuji claims that human consciousness arises from the encounter, Aitagala, translated as betweenness or re mutual relationships between human and nature. He rejects the Western concept of substance as an independently existing entity and the subject object distinction, as he believed that all things arise from the dependent origination. This is a very important Buddhist notion. Uh, Teaching, which is known as uh, the Chaf Nidana. Based on Chaf Nidana, Wasuji uh, develops his theory of Fudo. He defines Fudo in the three categories according to its climatic characteristics in terms of specific temperature and humidity condition, monsoon, desert, and metal. However, here is a problem with translation. In boundless translation, uh, Fudo is translated as climate, uh, but Fudo means more than climate. The kanji of Fudo consists of two characters, Fu, which means winds, custom, and therefore it refers to climate, and Do, Do means land or soil. The English term climate can only grasp the sense of Fu, but not Do. In fact, uh, we cannot blame Dao, uh, Daoness for these uh, errors because Wasuji himself focused only on Fu when he defined Fu into three categories. He defined them according to its climatic conditions. He disregarded the landform to a certain extent. The impact of landforms on human culture, however, should not be disregarded. In other words, one may criticize what uh, Wasuji and his three, three types of Fu values Fu over Do. By contrast, when discussing the interaction between nature and human culture, Hegel values Do over Fu. As Hegel claims, climate does have a certain influence. However, in that neither the torrid nor the cold region can provide a basis for human freedom or for world historical nations. Hegel suggests that in the sphere of natural determinants, the universal relation, which is of most importance of the history is land and sea, which are the place where human activities actually occur. Hegel defines three moments of universal relations between human society and land and sea, the waterless uplands, the river valleys, and the coastal regions. Among these uh, elements, we will only talk about coastal region. Uh, the coastal region is special because it's the only relation that deal with the relationship between the sea and the human society. According to Hegel, sea liberates human beings from the constraints of land. He said, the sea itself is limitless. 
and it is not conductive to the peace and restrictive life of cities as the inland regions are. Land in the sense of the broad river valleys binds men to the soil. Consequently, when a, a whole series of ties attached to him, to the locality he lives in. But the sea lifts him out of the, these narrow confines. That's why Hegel's uh, criticized China for regarding sea uh, merely as the limits of its territory. Here we see a, an ontological disagreement between Wasuji and Hegel. Unlike Wasuji, Hegel does not provide any theoretical framework explaining how cultural spirits arise from land and sea, possibly because Hegel assumes that land and sea are mainly places where cultural spirits manifest themselves. The cultural spirits are substance which exists before its interaction, their interaction with the nature. One Wasuji claims that cultural spirits arise from feudal or the Adagara between the human society and the nature and reject the assumption uh, of substance, Hegel does not. Hegel only claims that the sea, in fact, always gives rise to a particular way of life, but not the culture, the essence of the culture. No, because it assists, uh, its existence uh, precede the sea. Sea and land are only, co only conditioned the manifestation of cultural spirits. Because cultural spirits are free and self-determined. A coastal nation is not necessarily a maritime nation if its residents refuse to consider sea as a place to manifest their spirit. For example, China. Nevertheless, even if one agree with Hegel's assumption that cultural spirits are unchanged and reject Wasuji presupposition that self-consciousness only arises from the interaction between human society and nature, at least Hegelian should agree with the fact that some particular consciousness of a particular empirical object arise only from particular experience. For example, one would have no consciousness of coldness at all if one has never experienced any cold in one's life. Using one's the word, one cannot discover oneself in the cold simply because uh, of the absence of the Aidagara between one and the coldness. But it doesn't mean that the one does not exist before this experience. Wasuji is going too far from Hegelian point of view. So Hegelian should agree on this at least. That's why in this paper, I, I will suspend the, the ontological dis, uh, disagreement and use self-consciousness uh, in a sense as follow. To avoid the he hegel wasuji debate on whether self-consciousness pre-exists experiences, this article defines the concept, concept of land and sea consciousness as a cultural self-consciousness manifesting in land and sea. Likewise, peninsula self-consciousness means that a cultural self manifesting in a setting of peninsula. Peninsula is a, a special word. It comes from the Latin penis, uh, peninsula. Penny means almost, insula means island. So it means it literally means it's almost become an island. By contrast, the kanji of peninsula is bun do. Bun means half. It emphasizes the halfness, half island. A coastal peninsula is not an island because it remains attached to the continent, but it's not an inland either because it is also attached to the sea. As a coastal region of a continent, a coastal peninsula of a continent is the place where the continents and the sea meet. In this sense, the peninsula is an in-betweener between the continents and the sea. And this sense of in-betweener is preserved by the kanji bun or han, but it is missed by the Latin word because it only means almost. So let's move to Hong Kong, the feudal of Hong Kong. I can clarify the concept of uh, peninsula and the self-consciousness. Let's go to let's go to uh, the feudal of Hong Kong. 
In, in the Pearl River Delta and the South China coast, Hong Kong connects China and the West through navigation in modern history after 1842, when the British seized Hong Kong as its colony. Hong Kong uh, replaced Macau and become a new transfer station for traveler traveling between the East and West. And historically speaking, it's also important for other East Asian countries like Vietnam and Japan, because Hong Kong is the place where they encounter Western folk for the first time. Also, Shanghai is, uh, is also important. For example, Fukusawa, Yukichi uh, traveled uh, to Hong Kong and then to the Europe. Uh, also, uh, Watsuji Tetsuro, he also visited uh, Hong Kong twice when he traveled to Germany for his study in 1920s. But Hong Kong is not just westernized and connected to the West. Hong Kong locates in the Pearl River Delta. Pearl River, uh, including its uh, main tributary, the West River, connects Hong Kong to the inland places of China, like uh, Wuzhou in the province of uh, Guangxi. In 19th, 19th century, these inland cities lack railway system or road networks to, uh, to we maintain communication with uh, the outside world. So river transport becomes very important. Uh, this map you can see here is Hong Kong in the Delta, where, uh, where uh, the bed ship can enter. And uh, for the water transport, it links Hong Kong to inland city like Wuzhou. Wuzhou is one of the treaty ports in late 19th century uh, when the British, uh, uh, sort of ran the cities, ran the ports, and say the ports will be open for a foreign uh, import trade. So how the how can the goods be transported from Hong Kong to Wuzhou? The only way is a uh, river transport. And besides Wuzhou, some very remote and inland city in Guangxi or even in Guizhou, uh, Guizhou like uh, Kui, uh, Guilin, uh, Nanning here, they are also connected by the Pearl River. So they have access to the West through the river because the river links to Hong Kong and Hong Kong links to the West. Therefore, historian uh, Choi Se-hun argued that the economic success of Hong Kong is not simply because of its capitalist system, but was also due to the existence of the dual economic structures namely the coexistence of treaty and non-treaty ports, and foreign and native maritime customs authorities in mainland China from the 1850s, and that until the Second World War, Chinese merchants in Southern China used the Hong Kong as a hub to enable them to benefit from the hybrid maritime world and economic system in mainland China. So why I use the term peninsula self-consciousness to describe the self-consciousness uh, manifested in Hong Kong? In fact, 70% of Hong Kong's land is peninsula. Of course, uh, Hong Kong Island is a very important uh, hub in Hong Kong, but it accounts for, for a small portion of Hong Kong's land. More importantly, Hong Kong is attached to to the inland as a peninsula. A, being a peninsula, Hong Kong has a sense of in-betweenness. It is a be, in-betweener between the sea and the inland, between the West and China. The betweenness of uh, Bundou or Handu is significantly highlighted by the ge geographical condition of Hong Kong as a harbor located at the Pearl River Delta. Therefore, you can uh, also say uh, Hong Kong has a sense of delta self-consciousness or asteroid self-consciousness, but this word fail to emphasize or highlight the in-betweenness or the halfness. So I give up these terms. So now let's go back to Hegel's framework and see where the Hong Kong has uh, characteristic of the coastal region. Hegel lists several characters of the coastal regions, namely freedom, uh, independence, uh, courageous and also 
cunning. Let's uh, discuss the first character, freedom first. Unlike other residents living in the mainland China, residents in British Hong Kong between 19th century and the uh, Second World War enjoy the freedom to travel and have more access to the Western force. And that's why Japanese and Vietnamese, Korean, or mainland Chinese scholar went to Hong Kong to study uh, Western philosophy and even religion. Based upon the fact that Hong Kong was a hub of Chinese and Western culture exchange and a free harbor, freedom is an essential characteristic of the peninsular self-consciousness of Hong Kong. Besides, the freedom of the British Hong Kong also brings the city inclusiveness. The fact that there was no predominant ideology or religion, for example, Christianity is, is never a dominant religion in Hong Kong, although it's strong, it doesn't represent the large portion of the population. This uh, freedom uh, ensure Hong Kong to be uh, a free city. Everyone can express their own feeling and their thoughts. Hong Kong's connection to both the West and the China also guarantee its interconnectedness to the West and the mainland China and make it as an in-betweener between two. One may wonder where the Hong Kong manifests any courageous quality in the feudal of its coastal region as Hegel claims. But what is cur courageous in Hegel's context? Courageous means uh, as such, Hegel said, the sea awakens man's courage. Those who sail on it to earn their life, livelihood and wealth must earn them by hardest means. If it's about economic success, the marine trade and navigation, uh, if it's the case for Hong Kong, at least for the British Hong Kong, because the economic success, as I uh, quote from Choi, was greatly relied on the water transport including river transport and the ocean transport in the 19th century and the early 20th century. And for example, the Thai, uh, one of the tycoon in early 20th century Hong Kong, uh, Lei Sen, he uh, earned his profits from the sea trade be, uh, between Hong Kong and USA in the early 20th uh, century. Uh, his uh, property is three times higher than the British Hong Kong uh, taxation per year. So we can see a Hong Kong for future characteristic of courageous. However, where the Hong Kong has a sense of independence is controversial. If independence refers to the political independence, Hong Kong does not have this characteristic uh, uh, of the coastal region. Hong Kong never exists as an independent political entity. It was a British colony and now it's a special administrative region of the People's Republic of China. It does not have its own sovereignty. So uh, in this sense, I don't think independence can describe Hong Kong self, uh, peninsula self-consciousness. Let me skip to the conclusion. In, in short, the recent political unrest uh, in addition to the pandemic, has a worrying effect on the nature uh, on, of the Hong Kong Peninsula self-consciousness. As the interconnection of Hong Kong to the international world is currently disrupted and weakened due to several reasons, it's worrying that Hong Kong will lose its Peninsula self-consciousness and become an inland city when it regards the sea merely as a limit rather than a place to manifest its will. While the government uh, emphasized that the Great Bay uh, Area will give Hong Kong and other economic success and opportunity, they disregard uh, the duality of Hong Kong interconnectedness, that Hong Kong is not just connected to the mainland China, but also connected to the world and to the West. Future research may study where the Hong Kong uh, uh, or how Hong Kong can restore this kind of inner connectedness. That's all for my presentation. Thank you.